Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer practice lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will take a look at some aspects of syslog. You have surely seen syslog messages as you configure routers and switches. Some syslog messages inform you of things like interfaces being enabled and disabled. Others indicate major problems with the device, which can render it unfunctional. You can configure these messages to be displayed in real time on the CLI, and also to be stored in RAM or in a server for later reference. There are eight levels of severity, from level 0, aka emergency, to level 7, aka debug. Make sure you learn all eight severity levels for your exam. Okay, let's get started. Step one is to connect to R1's console port using PC2. To do so in Packet Tracer, click on PC2, click Desktop, then Terminal, and accept these defaults. Okay, now we are in the CLI for R1. Let's shut down and then enable the G00 interface and then check the syslog messages. Enable, conf t, interface G00. Shut down. Oh, we got a couple messages already. Now let's enable it. No shutdown. So what is the severity level of these messages? That is indicated by the number five here. Level five is aka informational, meaning these aren't critical messages which require urgent attention. Now we are instructed to enable date and timestamps for these messages. Without timestamps, these logging messages aren't very helpful when you look back at them at a later time. Exit. To enable these date and timestamps, use this command. Service timestamps log date time msec for milliseconds. Now, let's shut down and enable the interface again. Interface G00, shut down, no shutdown. We've got the same messages, but now there are date and timestamps at the beginning. The 301 indicates March 1st, by the way, as I haven't configured the date on R1. Okay, step two is to configure an enable secret of CCNA and then configure the VTY lines for Telnet. Exit, enable secret CCNA. Now let's configure the VTY lines. Line VTY 015, password CSENT, login, transport input telnet. Next, let's telnet from PC1 to R1's G00 interface. Telnet 192.168.1.1. The VTY line password is CSENT. Okay, we're in R1. Enable, password of CCNA, conf t. Now let's try to generate some syslog messages here by enabling an unused interface. Note that since I'm connecting to R1 via the G00 interface, if I shut down that interface, the telnet connection would of course cut off. So let's use G01. Interface G01. No shutdown. And no message appears. If you go back to our console connection on PC2, however, a syslog message appeared. That's because by default, syslog messages are not displayed over the VTY lines. Let's change that. Type end to go back to privileged exec mode. Then use this command. Terminal monitor. That should enable syslog messages to the VTY lines. Conf T, interface G01. Now let's shut it down. Shut down. There we go. Now the message is displayed over Telnet as well as over the console connection. Exit. The next step is to configure synchronous logging on the console and VTY lines. Now, what exactly is synchronous logging? Well, it's a little difficult to recreate on Packet Tracer, but without it enabled, if you are typing something into the CLI and a syslog message appears, 
the syslog message appears right in the middle of what you're typing, and it becomes very difficult to read your commands. If we enable synchronous logging, if a syslog message appears in the middle of you typing a command, iOS will then rewrite the command on a new line below the syslog message, so you can read it clearly before finishing and entering the command. Just make sure you know this command for the test. So to enable it, let's go first to the console line, line con zero. Then we just use a single command, logging synchronous. That's it. Now let's do it on the VTY lens also. Line VTY 0, 015. Logging synchronous. Exit. That's it. The next step is to enable logging to the buffer. This stores logging messages in RAM for you to view later. If I enter do show logging, you can see buffer logging is disabled. Let's enable it with this command. Logging buffered. Do show logging. Now, as you can see down here, the default size of this buffer is 4,096 bytes. Let's double the size to 8,192 bytes. Logging buffered 8192. Do show logging. There we go. Finally, let's configure R1 to send syslog messages to our server, server1. This is a really good idea, as the logging messages in the buffer disappear if you shut down the device. And you also don't want to take up a bunch of RAM space with logging messages, so an external syslog server is valuable. To configure this, we can either enter logging, followed by the IP address of the server, or logging host, followed by the IP, 192.168.1.100. There we go. Do show logging. There it is, logging to 192.168.1.100. Let's shut and no shut an interface and then check on server one. Interface G01, shut, no shut. Now to check messages on a syslog server on Packet Tracer, click the server, click services, then click syslog here on the left. In this lab, we took a look at some aspects of syslog. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.